Hi everyone, my name is Boris Biskaborn. I'm working as a postdoctoral researcher at the Alfred Wegener Institute, Helmholtz Center for Polar and Marine Research. I'm very grateful and I feel very, very honored that the Scientific Committee of the World Data System picked me this year for the Data Stewardship Award. And I'm very sorry that I couldn't do it in time uh, to the Science Data Conference in Denver and talk to you personally. I'm recording this video during the last day of our fieldwork in northeastern Siberia in the Russian boreal forest, as you see. And I think it's a pretty nice landscape. What I'm doing here with my colleagues is the same all other researchers are doing most of their days. I'm collecting metadata and data in samples, which will be analyzed to gain more data. It took us two days on a very, very bumpy road from Yakutsk to reach this area and many people are working hard every day to get access to samples to perform measurements and to collect data and metadata. While spending so much effort to gain data, it is hard to imagine that reportedly in science most of data are lost after a few years. Following a recent study published in Nature, 80% of data published in scientific journals are unretrievable after 20 years. That means that only 20% of data is stored and managed properly. Even during the short time being a scientist, I got a pretty good idea about the reasons behind that. During data management workshops and lectures for young researchers at international conferences in polar research, I was discussing this issue with the audience. We were talking about the fear that data gets stolen, automatically leading to the more philosophic question of the ownership of data. We were also talking about the time and efforts needed for proper data management and many other hurdles between data collection and data publication and permanent storage of data following international standards. In the projects and programs of page 21, GTNP, ESKP, Zip Lake, Palmod and Pangea, I could gain experience as a data scientist. In terms of data stewardship, the most interesting project is certainly GTNP, the Global Terrestrial Network of Permafrost, established by the International Permafrost Association and the Global Climate Observing System under the umbrella of WMO. GTNP is collecting permafrost temperature and active layer thickness data from the Arctic, the Antarctic and high mountain areas. In times of recent global climate change, it is of utmost importance to monitor these essential climate variables in these highly sensitive areas because warming and thawing of permafrost is threatening millions of people living in the northern areas, causing damage to infrastructure and economy. And on top of that, thawing permafrost is releasing carbon dioxide and methane to the atmosphere and hence amplifying global climate warming. However, permafrost data measured by different nations and research teams have never been accessible and have never been standardized, which means that these important climate variables could not be implemented in the IPCC models. The newly established GTNP data science team at the Alfred Wegener Institute and the Arctic portal in Iceland created for the first time a data management system designed for essential permafrost data and started data mining, collection and standardization of data from all permafrost zones of the Earth. We published papers on our methods and metadata statistics and performed several workshops on GTNP data management. And Jean-Pierre Langmann at the Arctic Portal is collaborating with the National Snow and Ice Data Center, the NSIDC, for developing a permafrost ML and web services, for optimizing the exchange of metadata and data between different databases. The GTNP database now has 1,300 boreholes and 250 active layer sites. Data and metadata are following international standards and are quality controlled and automatically visualized on our interface available at www.gtnpdatabase.org. For the first time, it is possible to calculate the permafrost temperature change on global scale. 
and I'm very happy that we managed to overcome the hurdles of international data management, data sharing and funding. We are now working on publishing our data in a high-ranking journal and providing permafrost temperature and active layer thickness data sets in harmonized and, harmonized and model-ready format to the global climate modeling community. Thanks a lot to everybody listening to this talk. I'm more than grateful for the WDS Data Stewardship Award and I will use this fantastic motivation to bring data management and science closer together. Again, best greetings from the Siberian forest. I think my colleagues really need me right now and I wish you a nice and successful conference. Bye-bye.